A few weeks ago, I went on Reddit and asked the community for reptile questions. I got way more questions than I was expecting, and so I figured, let's make a little series out of this and answer some more. Without any further delay, let's get into it. What is the most rare color for a reptile? Can they be purple? To start off, I want to say what the most common colors are. Brown and green. From there, yellows are also pretty common, as well as orange and black. Gray is also fairly common. As for the rarest color, there is no definitive answer, but most people agree that it's likely blue. There are not many reptiles out there that are blue. Some would say that pink is even rare, but there's a reason why that's not likely the case. In reptiles, the color red is a commonly occurring color, pink is just a diluted shade of red, and more reptiles are pinkish than you think. As for blue, it's not a common color for reptiles. A reptile will only appear blue if they have the right kind of cells called chromatophores. There are different kinds of chromatophores. The main thing to know is that these cells are responsible for producing color in most animal species except mammals and birds. Mammals and birds have melanocytes. That is where the term melanin comes from for humans. The different kinds of chromatophores are xanthopores, responsible for yellow, erythropores, red, iridophores, reflective iridescence, you can also see this on some snakes, lucifores, white, also where the term leucistic comes from in some reptile morphs, melanophores, black and brown, different than melanocytes in mammals, and finally cyanophores, blue. Now most reptiles produce blue by having a mixture of these different chromatophores. It's not always just cyanophores such as a veiled chameleon, for example, which have skin that contain a variety of different chromatophores layered on it. They can also move them around, and that is how chameleons change colors. They have all the different cells, they're just moving them around so that light hits them differently and produces the desired coloration. So, to summarize, probably blue. As for the second part, can they be purple? Sorta. Of. If a reptile had the cells to reflect blue, then it may also at times appear purple. However, as far as I know, there's not any reptiles that are actually purple. Many people will try to breed reptiles to have a purple-ish hue, such as with lavender hognose snakes or mystic potion ball pythons. However, these are not really purple, they just have a purplish tinge to them. Zenriques asks why reptiles are so rare. I think that depends on where you are. If you're living in a densely packed city, it may be harder to find one. But I can promise you, they are there. If there are hiding spots, lots of bugs, and the occasional bush or tree, there are likely reptiles. Reptiles are found in six of the seven continents on Earth, so unless you live in Antarctica, I am sure you can find one somewhere. It might just be a bit harder where you are. If you're looking to find some reptiles, maybe try to find a local herping group in your area. Best of luck. Before I hop into this last one, I did have to censor your name. I apologize to the person who asked this. However, I want to say this is one of the best questions I ever got, and I'm really, really glad you asked it. So, Old French asked, I lived in the country of Panama as a teenager and would see wild iguanas. They were huge and had big spikes on their backs. When I see them in captivity in the USA, where I live, even if they have good care and adequate enclosures, they do not seem as large and vibrant, and it makes me sad. Is there a reason they seem smaller, less colorful, or is my memory of wild ones, to be fair, almost 30 years ago, exaggerated over time? Can an iguana be happy in captivity? I will likely never own a reptile because I know the cost of proper care is very high for me, but let's pretend I won the lottery and won an iguana. What would be the financial layout for a proper enclosure, food, medical, and general care, and how much could I interact with it? Alright, that's a lot, and I'm happy to get into it. To begin, I think it's awesome you had a chance to live somewhere where you could see iguanas up close. That's pretty dang cool. Now, as for why they seem different, I have kind of a sad answer. Chances are, you are looking at the same species of iguana. Green iguanas are found commonly throughout Panama. Green iguanas are also the most commonly kept pet iguana here in the United States. In the wild, they do get quite large. This is because they're in their proper habitat. They got food surrounding them, they got the right humidity, living in a tropical environment like Panama, and all of their requirements are pretty much met. This allows them to reach their proper size and live out full lifespans. 
With the green iguanas you see in captivity, they're often much smaller because they're often much younger. To add, it is truly rare to find a fully grown adult green iguana in somebody's collection. This is because they are incredibly difficult to care for in captivity. So many die before ever getting as big as their wild counterparts. Now, can they be happy in captivity? Yes. However, I'd say most people cannot provide what they need for them to be truly happy in captivity. The reason you see so many small iguanas everywhere is because they're commonly sold in chain pet stores to people who don't know any better. So a lot of people buy them, realize they're just too hard, and give up. As for what they need, a lot. They'll likely need a custom enclosure. These enclosures need a lot of ventilation. However, green iguanas also need a lot of humidity, around 70%. So while you'll need a type of system that is spraying water in while also keeping it well ventilated, there's more to it. That's just one of the issues, and that's a big reason why people can't keep them alive. They'll need UVB lighting as well as heating, so once again, good luck maintaining humidity. Their diet is vegetarian, but you'll need to also include calcium powder for them. There is much more than what I mentioned here, including vitamins and other things, and I've never personally kept an iguana, so I likely missed a lot. However, my advice is, unless you want a full-time job being an iguana care person, just don't do it. There are a lot of people out there who are equipped to handle iguanas and do an excellent job of them. However, for most of us, it's just too big of a responsibility. As for cost, well, thousands. The iguana itself may be cheap, but the entire cost to set it up is very expensive. Don't be fooled by the $20 pet store iguanas. That $20 does not stay $20 for long. So with that, I'm going to conclude the video, and I am so thankful for all the questions. If you're watching this and have a question you want answered, feel free to drop it below. I love making these kind of videos, and I would be more than happy to make a third episode if I get enough questions. Thanks guys for watching. Until next time, take care.